So we now have our menu and we have an empty starting room in the project, uh, but we don't have much else going on, so we need to start adding stuff. Um, and one of the first things we need to start adding is some user interface elements. Most escape room type of games feature the same basic user interface elements, among them most commonly some kind of a text box where the game displays messages for the player and that's how it com communicates with the player and reacts to their actions. Now, it is a bit of a hassle to create each room in the game and then individually add a text box and some text to it. So instead, we'll go into look for a way to make a single layout that contains the necessary user interface elements and that can be connected to every subsequent room in the game. In order to do that, we have a tab here called external layouts which does just that. So these are layouts that contain some kind of elements that you may need in other scenes, multiple scenes in the game, and you can then load those layouts from inside the scenes and they will display the same thing. It doesn't just go for the text box if you have other things, say user interface elements in your game, such as a button to mute the music or a, an inventory system where the game lists all the objects that the player has. These types of things are also quite easily doable for external layouts. So let's create one right now and see how that works. I'm going to click here on create um, an external layout. So the name is not very inspiring. Let's rename the external layouts to something like UI layout, user interface layout. Right, so now let's click on it. Um, and let's go in the first thing uh, GDevelop is going to ask us is what is the scene that the layout is connected to? This creates an impression that each external layout may only be connected to one scene at a time. That's not actually true. Well, we need to make a choice in the beginning and choose one scene that the layout will be linked to. So let's click on choose the scene and the scene we'll connect in the layout to is room one because we don't need the text box for the menu. We need it for the actual room. So we're going to choose it. And again, the layout is empty right now. I'm going to scroll out. We're going to start by creating two objects. One is um, a text box and the other one is uh, sort of a semi-transparent ba black background underneath the text which will just make sure that the text is visible against potentially lighter colors. You'll see how it works. So first of all, let's add a new object and we'll add the background. So we'll go for new object tile sprite and we're going to call it text back or something like that. And we're going to select an image um, and the image we're going to load is back. This is the semi-transparent black background that we're going to be using and we're going to click apply and we're going to position it here and resize it so that it looks like a text box. You can also obviously have something more fancy and that looks like an actual frame uh, but we're going for a simple solution here. Now that we've done this uh, let's also create another object and this one is text. So we're going to create an object that will display text in the game. We're going to call it text box, which is text, doesn't really matter. Um, let's make the text slightly bigger. So I'm going for, let's say 32 points and let's make it white. So it looks nice on a darker background. And I'm gonna hit apply and I'm going to drag the text here, around here. So we have enough space for Two and a half lines of text, I think, in this text box. Let's actually resize it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, and reposition it like so. So now we can potentially have three lines of text that would fit into the, uh, the frame we have created. So these are the two basic things we want to have. Now, another thing uh, we should pay attention to is um, by default, GDevelop only creates objects within a given scene or layout, which means that every time you create a scene, uh, it's going to be empty. It's going to be completely void of any kinds of objects. Um, and this is okay if the objects on the scene are specific to just that scene, but if you want a set of objects that can be found across different scenes, um, you need to make them global. That means that these objects are 
by default accessible from any scene you have in your game. You don't have to create the same object every time you make a new scene. So we're going to do that for these two objects here because we want to use them quite often in an escape the room type of game. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to set text back as a global object. Notice this cannot be undone, uh, but that doesn't bother us here because that's exactly what we meant to do. And the other one, the text itself, we're also going to set as a global object. Also click OK. I'm going to save the game. And now we're good. One last thing we're going to do is we're going to open the layers editor and we're going to add a new layer that will contain the user interface elements. So we're going to rename this layer into UI layer and we're going to hide it so that if we want to hide the text box, the text itself and potentially any other components, uh, buttons or messages or whatever we might have on the screen at any point they're all located on the same layout, same level, layer. Okay, it took me three times to pronounce layer. Uh, and we're going to select these two objects here, text and the background, and we're going to choose layer and select UI layer. One last thing we're going to do is we're also going to resize this box for the text itself, like so. And we are good to go. So let's go back to the start page and we'll open the project manager and we'll go to room one. And now you can see that these two objects that we haven't actually added manually to room one are already visible here, the text back and the text box. And also if you go to layers, you can see that the base layer is here, but also the user interface layer is likewise here as well. So we're going to scroll out a little bit and we're going to start adding the other important parts of an escape the room type of game, such as some kind of visual background, right? A place where the game starts. So we're going to add a new object and we're going to create sprite. We'll call it background. We're going to add an animation to it. And the animation we're looking for is room one. So this is the starting location in the game. And we're going to click apply. We're dragging the background here. I'm going to manually adjust the coordinates under properties to zero and zero. Now what we need to tell the game is when the layout is started, we should let it know that it should load the text and the text box from the other layout. So these are not by default displayed as part of this room. We still need to tell the game here, this is the point where we need to load this information from this other external layout we have created. So if we go to room events, there's nothing here yet. We will add a new empty event, add a condition. The condition we're looking for is under scene. It's at the beginning of the scene. So at the beginning of the scene, we're going to add an action. And the action has to do with layouts don't quite external layouts okay this is where it is took me a while to find it under external layouts the only thing we can choose and that's the one we need is create objects from an external layout we're going to choose that one so the name of the layout we're looking for is what do we call it ui layout i think let's enclose it in quotes and we don't need to specify the x and the y position is just going to match the coordinates of the objects in the layouts that we're loading it from. So let's click OK. And now if we test the scene, what we're seeing is, yes, there's the background that we just manually created, but the game has also loaded the text and the semi-transparent black thingy underneath the text from the external layout. So that is a small success right there. And again, I'm going to save.